Good morning. I want to welcome everybody to the worship service today. I especially welcome those that are visiting with us online or watching online. Uh, you are part of our worship service too. We do start at 1045, and so we're going to try, I mean, excuse me, 845. And so we are going to try to get started. We know that we do have people watching online, so I try to be mindful of that because uh, the people that watch online include people from our own church, but others also. And uh, we have quite a few that watch during the week later on. So I do have a few things I want to quickly mention uh, in announcements, way of announcements. Uh, first of all, we're going to be trying to get some extra folks for the praise team. We're wanting um, another male and another female voice to help with praise team. But the way we're going to do this is I know that part of the problem in the past has been that people couldn't be here every Sunday. So I'm trying to develop a group of, say, three guys and three women. Then Marcy's agreed to help me. We will have a rotation. And to be on the praise team, you must, let me repeat, must practice when the praise team practices on Wednesday night. We're doing this for God and we have to be doing it correctly. But if you are willing to be part of the, the male or the female rotation, would you please see Marcy and as soon as we get this together, then we will start announcing the practices. So I've already asked uh, a couple of people already uh, and hopefully they'll respond, but I hope that you'll do that. Also, we want to celebrate uh, a new event that you may have already seen. Uh, we have two new members that took the vows of membership during this week, uh, Gina and Frank Burns. There they are. Hey! We're glad to have them. Uh, also, uh, we have a birthday girl with us today, uh, Fee. Today is her birthday, so we wish her happy birthday. 29 and holding. 29 and holding. And then I want to thank this mission we'll kind of bring up in the, in the prayer time. Uh, Misha Hanners, you'll mind us, she, she, she's not here today. Um, she has had COVID, but she's over it. But her 23-year-old son was involved in a motorcycle-type accident, and he, they thought he had had a brain aneurysm, uh, and so they're in Huntsville Hospital. So please be in prayer uh, for them, if you would. And so now I would like for us to open our worship service with prayer, uh, asking for the Holy Spirit to be in our midst. Father God, we just come before you again. And Lord, we know that you promised when two or more are gathered together in your name, you are present. And Father, we depend upon your presence. Lord, I want to pray this morning that you will help us to cast aside anything else that is on our mind. Help us to focus on you. Lord, we pray there will be no distractions in this worship service today. And Lord, that we will be solidly on you. We pray for those, Lord, that are watching online, that they will experience you. And Lord, we pray for those that have chosen not to be here, even though they had nothing else to keep them that they would recognize that they need fellowship. So come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see all of you this morning. Uh, like I say every week, it seems like more and more people keep showing up, and that makes me very, very happy, and I'm sure that makes God even happier. So let's stand and sing as you're able as we come together in worship.
Outdoors, so we can share what love affords. Pour ourselves out like the wine that we've been saving. So when our well is running dry, and when we raise our glasses high, happy shining are the faces of the thirsty.
so good to me how perfect are your ways how endless is your grace forever i will sing your praise you are you are so good to me and heaven sure you call my name you are you are so good to me a thousand tongues a angel say you are you are so good to me you are you are so good to me oh you are you are so good to me raise your hand if God's been good to you amen amen will you join me as we affirm our faith together do you believe in God the Father I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth do you believe in Jesus Christ Do you believe that he rose from the dead? I believe that on the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God's Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Amen. You may be seated. to hold on to this world with everything I have but I feel the weight of what it brings and the hurt that tries to grab the many trials that seem to never end his word declares this truth that we will enter in this rest but wonders are new but I hold on to this hope and the promise that he brings that there will be a place with no more suffering there will be a day with no more tears and no more pain and no more fears there will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more we'll see jesus face to face but until that day I know the journey feels so long You feel walking on your own But there's never been a step where You've walked out all alone Trouble then don't lose your heart Cause joy and peace he brings And the beauty that's in store Always the heart of life sting But I hold on to this hope And the promise that he brings That there will be a place with no more suffering There will be a day with no more tears And no more pain no more fear and there will be a day when the burdens of this 
this place will be no more. Yeah, to see Jesus face to face. And but until that day, I can't wait until that day where the very one I live for always will wipe away the space. To touch the scars that ransom me of a life of shame and misery oh this is why this is why i sing and there will be a day where the burden will pass and no more pain and no more fears and there will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more we'll see jesus face to face there will be a day when no more tears and no more pain and no more fears and there will be a day when the burdens of this place will be no more we'll see jesus face to face but until that day But when we give to him out of trust, that's a sign that we're wanting to go deeper. So let's pray. Father, we lift up the tithes and offerings for this week unto you. And God, we ask that you receive them to be used to further your ministry through this church. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I'm going to invite you to pray as we did last week. Uh, if that makes you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to do this. But what I would like for us to do is pray out loud again, but I'm going to kind of give us a guide. We will use the ACTS acronym, adoration, where we lift up our praises to God, where we confess God's sins of our nation, sins of our world, in your own personal sin if you want to do that. Thanksgiving, where we give thanks to God for what he's doing, and supplication, where we pray for other people. So you can kind of listen in that, but we want to start first with adoration of how we adore God and how, what we think about God. So feel free to pray out loud or be silent, whatever you want to do. I don't want this to be forced, but I do believe that there's power when we pray out loud. Father God, we just come before you today and we adore your holy name. God, let us be focused on who you are, the kings and Lord of lords, the one who provides for our needs, the God forever, the God who is here today. And so, God, we adore you and we give you praise. Father, we come before you to confess that our hearts have not always been faithful toward you, that we have sought after our will rather than your will. Our nation has moved away from you rather than staying close to you. Father, we confess that before you. Lord, we confess that as a church, many times we have let worship become a thing of ritual or something that is about us instead of you. And so, God, we pray for forgiveness. But, God, we also come into this place to give you thanks. To give you thanks for what you have done for each and every one of us. 
for showing your grace to us, for filling our hearts with your Holy Spirit, for dying on the cross for us, for, for providing for the basic needs of our lives. For that we give thanks. And Father God, we also gather in this place to lift up prayers for others. Father, we lift up Misha and Mark Hanners and their son to you at this time, and we ask for your healing hand upon him. And Lord, I want to lift up my brother Stephen Arnold, who on this day, today represents a, a joy and yet a sorrow, uh, for it is the anniversary of his wife's transition to be for you, uh, with you, and so I lift him up. But God, I just, I want to be quiet now because those are my supplications. I want to ask that everybody lift up the prayers of people they need to pray for this morning. Yes. Any others? Now, Lord. I pray again as we, pray, as we, many of us gathered in the prayer room earlier, I pray this again. Lord, I have tried my best to listen for this message, but I confess, oh God, I cannot do it justice without your Holy Spirit anointing and using me. For Lord, I am so serious about us as a church going deeper. And so please bring the words you want me to say to my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have someone now that's going to read the scripture for us. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 6, 46 through 49. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was built well. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, I want you to go back to a time in your mind when you met either your spouse or someone who would become your very best friend. If it was the spouse, maybe you saw him for the first time and you went, wowzer, yikes, I want to get to know him or her. Or maybe it was a friend at work that you just kind of felt drawn to. But what if all you ever did was maybe go out on one date with the person that you end up marrying and never, ever went any further? What if the person at work, you just talked to them at work, and you never went out and never did anything? Would your relationship grow? Absolutely not. We want to go deeper with God. We want to grow deeper with other people Yet, sadly, what happens... Back up, Mike. We're a little bit ahead. Uh, sadly, what happens with a lot of people that call themselves Christians is they're like this person who never went deeper with another person. There's no sense of intimacy and closeness. And you know what? It's come to my uh, realization... That if God wants it, the reason why we don't have it, and I say it again, 
is because we choose not to pursue the relationship. God wants us to be close with him. And we can say, well, I believe in God, but guess what? James tells us that even the demons believe in God, but would you say that they have a close relationship with God? A lot of people think they're Christian because they grew up in the church or supposedly accepted him sometime or another, but they never sought to go deeper. And Jesus says in this passage that we read, and I think it's interesting because the Greek that is used there literally means a person who digs down deep to build their foundation. So Jesus is telling us if we want our lives to be right with him, a true Christian is a person who digs down deep into their relationship with God. And I know that I've been preaching on the subject of God's will for several weeks now, and we kind of shifted gears last week as I shared with you what I felt like God was telling me about us as a church of going deeper, or digging deeper. And so I began to think, well, Lord, why? Why do you want us to go down deeper? And all these things started pouring into my head. I'm sorry, my mouth's real dry. And what's amazing is I've got, I've got next week's sermons and the next two sermons already outlined. I mean, God just started throwing it in there, y'all. I'm like, oh, okay, get, let me catch up. But I'm not going to pour all that onto you in one <laughs> sermon because I know your backside can only stand so much. So we're going to break it down. Today, we're going to be kind of looking at two questions. What does it mean to go deeper? And then, why would God want us to go deeper? So, what does it mean to go deeper? It means to know and understand that the Lord is our God. Listen to what God says to the prophet Jeremiah. Let not the wise man gloat in his wisdom or the mighty man in his might or the rich man in his riches but let them boast in this alone that they truly know me and understand I am the Lord who is just and righteous whose love is unfailing that I delight in these things I the Lord have spoken God is saying through the prophet that if we're going to brag about it, guys, we ought to brag about that our God, go ahead and move it forward, Mike. Our God wants to be and is close to us. That he is the true, wonderful God of the universe. And to truly let the world know who Jehovah is. You know, who Je the name Jehovah comes, a Greek word, from the Hebrew word, word Yahweh. Yahweh means I am who I am. So as we come to know God, we dig a deeper relationship with the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It means that I not only know about him in my head, but I've experienced him working in my life. To know someone in the biblical sense is to have great intimacy, much like the intimacy that should exist in a marriage between husband and wife. But the, the intimacy God wants for us is even closer than that. And one of the things that I have been confronted by the Holy Spirit through some things I've been reading is that while we know that God's word is paramount, it corrects us and shows us the truth and that some things like the creeds that we read a while ago are important, 
that what we've done in the church today if we make Christianity too much into a purely rational religion, a head religion, learn this, learn this, learn this, and yet we wonder why people don't have the power of God working in their lives. We base it all on what we know and how we've been educated about God. John Wesley the one that God used to found the Methodist church was a highly educated man. He went to the finest colleges of England and he was educated in what would be equivalent of a seminary today. And he worked hard. He worked really hard to grow in his relationship on his own. He went and preached in prisons. He tried to help the poor and needy. Uh, he prayed a lot. He came to America to evangelize the Indians. So he had a hunger for God, but he based it all on his brain on what he could learn and what he could do. And he admits that his heart was empty. But one day, while he was with a group of Christians studying the book of Romans, he says that his heart was strangely warm. In other words, John Wesley had a heart experience with a living God and it changed his life forever. He began to know that he had assurance of his salvation. And what is so wild to me is what happened after that. John Wesley, after God had granted him this wonderful experience, he impacted, historians, historians agree, that because of his preaching to the poor and needy and the transformation that happened in England, England did not go through a bloody revolution as did the French. And because a young man named William Wilberforce heard John Wesley preach and his heart was pricked and he learned and knew that slavery was gone wrong and Wilberforce became the one that God used to end slavery in England. All because one man's heart was warned by the Spirit of God. So that's what it means to go deeper. We do all we can so that we build a deep relationship with God. But then I got to thinking, okay, well, why does God want us to go in a deeper relationship? I believe part of it is because God desires to be celebrated. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalm 19. The heavens tell the glory of God. The skies display his marvelous craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is silent in the skies. Yet their message has gone out to all the earth and their words to all the world. The sun lives in the heavens where God placed it. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. Now, in We Angels, we've been doing a, a study on creation about what God has created. Now, I want you to look at a couple of those pictures. I, I, I'm a corn between the two. When I was younger, I was definitely a beach, beach man. I'm more of a mountain man now. But I don't know about y'all, but when I'm out there, whether I'm looking at the majesty of his mountains or standing at the beach, sometimes I can get lost in God's greatness. It's not that I have to even say a word, but I know that the creation shows me there is a God. And then look at some of these. Look at what God has done for us. Look at the beauty of that fish. The wonderfulness of the flowers, the birds, the trees, the cats and the dogs. All of this 
lets us know that our God is a great God who created it all this beauty so that we might enjoy it, that we might come to praise and celebrate Jehovah Jireh so that we can experience him. Amen. David experienced it if you've ever read Psalm 8 when he says, Oh, Jehovah, you are the Lord. Your, your majestic name fills the earth. Your glory is higher than the heavens. When I look at all you've created, what are mere mortals that you should care for us? Think about that. I walked Mitzi last night and I looked up at the stars and saw the moon and I'm thinking, wow. To think that all of this universe was created by God and yet he cares about a little bitty droplet like me. Which leads to my next point. God wants us to draw closer to him because he wants us to know just how much he adores us. So many people have the wrong idea about God. Some have just a minimal relationship with God, and so they see him as a vengeful, angry God wanting to punish them all the time. So God wants us to have a deep relationship with him so we can know just how much we are loved. Romans 5. While we were utterly helpless, Christ came at the right time and died for us sinners. Now, no one is likely to die for a good person, though someone would be, might be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But then notice this. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. God wants you to be in a close relationship with him so he, you will know how deeply he loves you. He sent his son to die for you to show you how deeply he cares for you. God loves humanity so much that he was willing to suffer through his son on the cross and to watch it happen as it happened. God doesn't care about what we've done he doesn't care how far we distance ourselves from him. He still loves us. And while God is righteous and true and holy, if you've made a mistake and you've not lived a holy life, guess what? That doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Amen. God is not like some angry parent who say things that belittle and hurt you. I ministered to someone this week who told me about their father because of a mistake he'd done made years ago that he got caught up in drugs. His life has been clean for many years now, but his father still calls him a drug addict. You'll never amount to anything, you drug addict. God never does that. His desire is for you to be so close to him that he can mend your heart that he can encourage you in your life, that he can forgive you as your past, and he wants you to be broken free of anything and everything that would bring depression, anxiety, anything that will destroy your relationships, doubt, negativity, anger, frustration. He wants you to be freed from all of that. So he wants you to be closer to him so we can do that for you. Which leads to another thing that God gave me. God wants us to be close to him, dig deeper in him, so we can have a full life. Many people today are living very unhappy lives. Marriages are falling apart. People are living in anxiety and fear. Some are negative because of past hurts. And all they do is complain and find fault with others. And it happens in the church. I grew up in the church. Now, I believe it's changed since then. But people would walk into worship on Sunday morning, and it's like they're taking notes all through the sermon, not of what God said, but what complaint they could find in the worship service for the day. 
and go home and gripe and complain that this wasn't right and this wasn't right. That's a sign that we're not going deeper with God because worship is not about us. It's about Him. We don't come in here trying to find fault. We come in here to worship the living God. And yeah, if the sound system messes up for a second, okay, it happens. But that's not the focus. The focus is on Him. And some folks get so caught up in that negati negativity that they go from church to church to church trying to find what they're looking for. But the truth of the matter is, if God's word is being proclaimed and hearts are being changed, what does it matter if everything doesn't go exactly smoothly? Pastor Alec Rowland says in the book on experiencing God, one of the things he thinks that's hurt us in America is that we have tried to make worship into a slick production. That we want everything to be just so. We want smoke and lights and everything under the sun and trying to make everything perfect in worship, we may have very well pushed the Holy Spirit out because we made it more about us than about Him. And folks, I really believe the reason why so many lives that are caught up in negativity and complaint, the reason why we experience problems in their marriages, which, by the way, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you won't have problems in your marriage. I noticed I didn't hear amen on that one. <laughs> Everybody's afraid to say that one. But it doesn't just be, can be any relationship. It's because we are not seeking to grow closer to God. If two people in a relationship seek to go closer to God, deeper in God, I assure you it will change their relationship. Jesus said this, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but that he came to give us life in all of its fullness. Jesus is not talking about money, or possessions. He's talking about a life of peace, a life that is anxiety free, a life where we don't have to feel uptight, a life where we don't have to compare ourselves for others. And you know what? <clears throat> I can say this for my own life. I know that as your pastor, I'm still a human being. Okay? Can somebody say amen? amen. I have had times all through my ministry where I may get up and preach, but y'all don't know it during the week. Maybe I didn't feel so close to God. Maybe I was out of sync with God. Maybe I was harboring something in my heart that shouldn't be. And you know what that does? I feel unsettled. I think that's what happens with a lot of us. The Holy Spirit shows us something's not right. And when we draw closer to him and we expose that stuff and we get it right with him, we literally feel better. At least emotionally and spiritually. Maybe not physically. Psalm 32, and I didn't put this one up, says this. Oh, the joy for those whose rebellion is forgiven, whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who record the Lord has cleared of sin, whose life had been com lived completely honestly. When I refused to confess my sins, I was weak and miserable. I groaned all day long and all night. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength was evaporated like water in the summer heat. Did you hear that? The psalmist is saying that. That when we're living away from God, when we're not doing as we should, we're not, when we're not seeking God, when we're running our mouths with gossip and, and negativity, when we're living in known sin, when we don't spend with God time with God, our anxiety and fear and frustration begins to grow. But then listen to what else the psalmist said. Finally, I confess my sins to you and stop trying to hide, him, hide them. 
I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord, and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. God wants us to go in a deeper relationship with him so we can have a happy life so that no matter what comes our way, we can handle it. He wants to heal broken relationships. He wants to break free people from the, the chains of worry and depression and anxiety. The things that we do, the, the idea of us comparing ourselves for other people like we do. We need to be more concerned with what God thinks and when we have issues in our lives, instead of worrying what another person may think about laying it at the foot of the cross, we need to be worried about what he thinks. And I want to add this. I truly believe that when you are closer to God, it makes you more concerned for your fellow human being. You see, God does not give us... Now, let me say this. I've heard a lot of people, and I did too. Was the Spirit here last week or what? Amen. And it felt great. And we talk about it. I talked about it. But guess what? God did not give us, and he doesn't give us these high moments just for us to say, oh, that was great. God gives us those high holy moments to empower us to do ministry. It's not a feel-good session. It's energy to go out of this place and make a difference. J Jesus said to his disciples, when the, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you are to preach for me in Jerusalem, Samaria, and all the world. And John Wesley said, the world is my parish. Folks, the closer we get to God, the more we care about salvation of other people home and abroad. And one thing that God put on my heart this week, our church does not support any foreign missionaries at all. Zero. None. That is wrong. I used to be involved with a group called Mission Society for United Methodists. They've changed their name. I'm going to be getting in touch with them. We're going to have a missionary come to talk and we're our church is going to become more concerned about not just what's happening in Rainbow City and Etowah County, but about people coming to know Jesus Christ worldwide. Can I have an amen on that one? And finally, God wants us to dig deeper in a relationship with him so we can experience the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. Ephesians, Paul says, Ephesians 1 I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so you can understand the wonderful future he has promised to those he called. I want you to know the rich and glorious inheritance he's given his people. I pray that you will begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power to all of us who believe. He says this, This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul is praying that the church in Ephesus and all of us that would ever read his word, that we would recognize the Holy Spirit we talk about that lives in the heart of a truly born-again Christian is the same power that raised Christ's dead, lifeless body from the grave. So, would you have to say that has to be pretty powerful stuff? Yet we wonder why we don't see the power of God's Holy Spirit at work, at work in the church in the United States. Have y'all heard about what's happening in United Methodist churches in Africa? They're on fire. Churches are growing on Afri in Africa. You know why? It's because they have not become such a strongly rational church. They don't make their experience of God only on what they've read, but they believe that God still works in the life of the church. 
and people get saved and they're delivered and lives are changed because they are open. They want to go deeper. They're not shut out of the work of the Holy Spirit. And folks, I honestly think that if we all go deeper, dig deeper with God, he will do the same for us. He will bring zeal to our hearts. He will set our hearts on fire for him. He will help us to continue to dig deeper. And the, digger, the deeper we dig into this hole with God, the greater we become for the power of God. And the more people get to know God because we will want to share him. Folks, that one morning this week, I got, before I even took my head off the pillow, I asked God, God, give me an opportunity to speak your word into somebody's life. And that very day, two situations came up that I got to do that. Folks, he will do it if you want it. But you know what? I think there's a lot of Christians in this church, because they're everywhere, that think, well, I'm really close enough to God. You know, I've been a Christian in a long time. But I want to share a verse with you that I'm going to use to start next week. What do y'all think about the Apostle Paul? You think the Apostle Paul must have been pretty close to Jesus? I mean, my gosh, the guy had been persecuted. He proclaimed the gospel everywhere. But you know something he said one time? I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. He's admitting even though he's gone deep, he wants to go deeper. Now, I truly believe this is a calling of God and I asked this last week, do we want to go deeper? Do we want to toss away our pride that may cause us to keep from asking? And I asked y'all, did you want it? And y'all all said yes. But I want to ask you something, church. What did you do different this week than what you always do? Some will say, well, I, I read my upper room this week. Uh, well, so what? You probably read your upper room every week before then. And folks, upper room, I'm going to make y'all mad, and I'm sorry. Upper room is okay if you want to go about that deep. It'll make, it'll make you feel good in the morning. But we need something deeper than the upper room. So, you've read your upper, well, I prayed a few minutes this week. Well, that's, that's great. But weren't you praying before last week? You see, you can fool me and you can fool God, but he knows the truth of whether you've done something this week in your life to go deeper. Folks, do you have relationship problems? Maybe in your family. Maybe you've been trying to deal with it at home and you're getting nowhere. Maybe your life is full of stress and anxiety and you need peace. Maybe your head is telling you that you need to go deeper, but your heart is so numb that you just don't do anything about it. Maybe you're watching at home. And if you can't be here in a church, that's fine. Because if you're sick or whatever. But if you can be here in a church, are you going to? Folks, I truly believe if we want to go deeper, we got to ask for it. And we got to live it out. And we got to let go of our stupid, foolish pride. Sometimes, do you know, a lot of churches <clears throat> quit having altar calls. And truthfully, altar calls were not something that the very early church did. But do you know why altar calls are important? Because it says to God, I don't care what anybody else thinks about me. I care about what you think, and I need your help. 
I'm going to go to the altar and tell you that to the whole world, I don't care what you think about me. I need your help. I want to go deeper. I want to change. Folks, what does your heart need? Are you willing to ask for it, swallow your pride, and pray to the Lord? A lot of you say, well, I can pray in my seat. That's true. But I honestly think, because I know in my own life the way I've been, that sometimes we want to pray in our seat because we don't want to be held accountable. When we come to the altar, we've told the whole world, I want to be different. We told God, I want to be different. And we're really telling our church, I need you. So as we close out in just a minute, if the Lord has spoken to your heart and you truly want to go deeper and you know that you've not done anything different since last week and you want to start doing something different, you truly want to dig deeper, I want to invite people to just come and go prayer on their own. You raise your hand and I'll pray with you. But otherwise, it's between you and God. But the altar is going to be open for those who know they need to go deeper. Let's pray. Father, I'm asking you to do a work of your Holy Spirit in this room. Lord, if there's people with troubled relationships, if there's people that are caught up in anxiety, if there's people that are caught up with depression, people caught up with negativity, unforgiveness, bitterness, anything that is keeping them from being closer to you, Lord, that they would come and ask for your help to let it go. And Lord, that you would help people in this room that maybe they don't have any of that kind of stuff, but maybe they just think, well, I'm okay where I am. And the truth of the matter is, we all need to be like Paul and say we want more. So Lord, work in this room. I ask that your Holy Spirit prompt hearts, and I pray that I've done and said what you want me to say. In Jesus' name, amen. The altar is open if you would like to come and pray. And again, it between you and God unless you raise your hand. Otherwise, you can come and go. But you're invited to come if the Lord has spoken to your heart today. the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free He has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was slave, slave to sin, Jesus died for me.
There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Keep playing. <clears throat> Y'all, I'm not a, dr a dramatic kind of preacher. But I want to tell you something. There are people in this room that need to come down and tell God the truth. There are people in this room that I know, I know because I've never seen you come to the altar, that you're holding back. Why do we do that? If God has spoken to your heart and you feel the urge to come forward, if you don't, you're telling God no. Now, if you don't feel in that urge, that I don't want you to come forward. But if you're feeling that urge that you need to come and pray, if you don't do it, you're telling God no. And is that what you want to do? So we're going to sing that song at least halfway through one more time. And if you feel that the Spirit spoke into your heart, please don't say no. go deeper. Spend more time with God in prayer this week. Read his holy word. Get outside and meditate on his greatness. If you have an issue with another person, ask God to help you deal with it. Let us go deeper with God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming today. And for those of you who joined online, we thank you for coming.